Lightfall, Destiny's newest expansion that released in the 20th of February and it has been out for a couple of weeks and I decided to give myself some time to, you know, play it and kind of form some of my own thoughts on it. This is going to be divided into a few sections where I'll discuss the campaign, post-campaign gameplay, the new raid and the future content that we currently know of. The campaign has two aspects I want to focus on, the gameplay and the narrative. The gameplay for Lightfall met the same standards I was hoping for from Witch Queen. It was pretty solid. The new Strand subclass was fun to use and I liked that it was optional in some of the encounters during the campaign. However, the exhaustion feature was kinda weird, but I guess I understand its purpose. The level design in Neo Muna, the destination that is released with Lightfall, is also pretty good. And I like the aesthetic that Bungie was going for with the whole futuristic city vibe. With bugs aside, I think the new weapons and exotics are pretty nice and I don't have any complaints with them really. Now we go to the narrative where I find it quite strange. The story of Lightfall was advertised as the beginning of the end with the witness becoming the newest danger and Kallus as his disciple taking over New Moon. We soon find that this was because of the veil being hidden by Savathun on Neptune. We soon find that we don't really know what it is. I feel as if Bungie wanted to make the veil seem like a big secret and that would have been fine but the way that it was delivered was pretty purr for me because the veil was treated like it was common knowledge amongst characters and we're never told what it actually is and because of this the sticks do not feel like they're high sticks and I don't even know why the veil is dangerous for the witness to have his possession. I don't know. I still don't even know what the veal did at the end of the campaign. All I know is the Traveler has a big triangle on it, so that's cool I guess. Aside from this major setback for the narrative, I did like seeing Callus transform into a Disciple of the Witness, losing aspects of his previous self that we knew from the Duality Dungeon and other previous aspects of Destiny. Any interaction that the witness and Kalos had during the campaign was very well delivered and I loved every second of those two together but aside from this the story was kind of lackluster and I kind of felt it was to compensate for Strand gameplay and I don't even know where Strand came from so that's cool I guess. Again I don't have a problem with the gameplay aspects of the campaign at all but the narrative just was not it for me. Another issue with the campaign that I felt was the new characters, Rohan and Nimbus. I don't hate these characters, but they did not receive enough development for me to care about them that much during the campaign. If you don't develop a character enough and you kill one off, I'm not going to feel much about it because I don't really know who the character is. So when Rohan dies, it is sad I guess, but I didn't really feel as sad as the likes of when another important character dies, like Rasputin in Season of the Seraph, because you know who he is. That's all I have to really say about the campaign. I don't necessarily think it's as terrible as people say it is, but the narrative is kind of a letdown when I was experiencing it. And yeah, that's all I have to really say about that. On to the post-campaign content. I find the post-campaign content quite solid. I like seeing more character development from Nimbus since they didn't get much before, so that's a pretty cool touch. Learning about how the Black Heart was a field copy of the Veal was also cool, but I still don't really know what the veal is so that's not incredibly helpful just yet i'm sure we'll understand more later on in the year i don't have much to complain about in terms of post campaign gameplay other than i guess strand aspects and fragments being character based i don't hate this edition but i would prefer to not farm strand meditations excessively for my subclasses stasis was account based 
but took longer to get the materials and I do very much prefer this approach and I hope that if another subclass comes out, Bungie finds a good balance for a smooth grinding experience. Now for the Root of Nightmares raid. I think that Bungie's hype leading up to the boss of this raid was very well done. Having to use certain gear to hear Nezarak's whispers in patrol is a very fun way to kind of put these easter eggs around and I look forward to seeing more of this in the future. It's a very nice touch. Before I mention how the contest experience was for me, I would like to clarify a couple important points before I do this. The first thing is I am happy when I see more players experience contest mode. I like seeing people get emblems. I myself not huge on emblems but I like seeing other people reach an achievement within destiny so I don't want to take that away from you by my viewpoint on the raid. My second point is Bungie's recent approach to make destiny more difficult as a whole. Bungie removed the adept difficulty in nightfalls and made the other tiers of content for nightfalls much harder to make destiny more challenging and this was done with Lost Sectors making Legend and Master much higher par cap. I do like this change and I was actually really excited for contest mode whenever I got to experience these changes before launching into the raid. I prepared lots of loadouts for different scenarios and I was ready for a very tough raid based on the previous changes that I mentioned. So me and my team launched the day one raid and I was met with something completely different. The combat difficulty for this raid felt easier than doing patrol on Neo Muna on contest mode. Yeah. This was not the difficulty I was really expecting to play for the hardest content that the game has and only comes out twice a year. Mechanically speaking, Root of Nightmares was relatively fun. The third encounter is one of my favourite raid encounters in the game for how it presented itself and for the mechanics. The combat difficulty bothered me. I felt as if I was stupid for preparing so heavily but from my previous experience of Day 1 raids my preparation was always appreciated by my performance. This time, my preparation felt like it was a waste. My view on the day one experience also, like I said, should not take away the enjoyment that other people had. If I were to dislike PvP, but you like PvP, then we're mutually respective on how our views are on different experiences of the game. You might find the day one experience to be challenging, and I respect your view on that. I simply just think that my experience was quite dull. I didn't feel particularly in danger during this raid. The boss health for the third and final boss were almost laughable. A two phase on Nezarek, the final boss, that's kind of shocking, and usually you have to squeeze out every piece of ammo to just get this slightest amount of damage necessary to kill a boss, but Nezarek just kind of fell. I don't know if this is a power creep or just bad tuning, but it felt wrong for a day one raid to be as easy as it was. Aside from the day one experience, the raid itself wasn't terrible. I like the aesthetic a ton, and the mechanics are relatively basic but are still nice and play out pretty well. But I just didn't feel like it was as memorable as previous day ones. Vi of the Disciple, for example, was incredibly memorable for me for its difficulty, and I loved testing my own strength for the first time. King's Fall was slightly off chin with difficulty as War Priest was a brick wall for many teams. But I'd say it still tested my patience and my resilience, so I still appreciated that experience. But with Root of Nightmares, I feel like the only thing that was being tested was my urge not to fall asleep. Some people say that this is a good thing because it can be accessible to new players. And whilst I somewhat agree to that, I feel like the older raids in the game are already pretty accessible. Deepstone Crypt and Vault of Glass are pretty good examples of relatively easy raids to run where people can get a grasp of how raids play out. I feel like day one should test players on their skill in PvE content, otherwise what weight does a day one have? With that being said, I think it's best to talk about the final topic, which is the future of Destiny. I'll ignore leaks and resort to what we currently know. The VL is possibly going to be explained in a future quest next season, which is very nice. The future seasons are something I'm quite looking forward to, which I don't think many people will differ. My only fear for the future is the future of this current par creep that's going on. I'm kind of hoping Bungie's next day one is more aligned to how previous day one raids were. 
Since we're getting stronger, I feel like we're going backwards with the easier difficulties. And that seems to be pretty much everything we know currently. We know the final shape is coming out next year. Definitely looking forward to that. I'm hoping that the future of Destiny is looking bright. But I do have concerns that I hope Bungie will put to ease. Thank you for listening. And let me know what you guys think of Lightfall as a whole. And if you have a day one re-experience, let me know what you guys think of the re-